Miss Clueless longed for the mystery to be solved so she could sit down. Her feet were killing her, and this outfit made her look ridiculous, especially the banner with the stupid name on it. On a normal day, she wore flat heels and a comfortable skirt and a blouse to work. But for the mystery meals, she always had to wear a red gown, the banner, and the high heels. She worked harder on these days, too. The mystery meals brought in crowds. So in addition to her hostess duties, Miss Clueless helped clear the tables between courses. As she piled dirty d- dishes on a tray, a pudgy woman with frizzy hair tapped on her shoulder. There's a message written on the mirror in the ladies' room, the redhead said. It gives some names and says they've been kidnapped. Not again, said Miss Clueless. Since we're supposed to solve a murder, not a kidnapping, I thought I should tell someone, in case it's a real message. It's not real, Miss Clueless said. Customers often plant phony evidence as a way to throw others off track and give themselves a better chance to solve the mystery first. Oh, the redhead said. That's a relief. I thought for a moment it was an actual plea for help. I'll take care of it, Miss Clueless said. She headed for the women's bathroom. Some people would do anything to solve a mystery and get their meal free. The last time someone had left a fake clue on the mirror, it was written with lipstick. And it had to be taken, and it had taken Miss Clueless 15 minutes of hard work to get it off. Thank goodness whoever wrote this message had used soap. She took a wad of wet paper towels and scrubbed away the words. The message came off easily. She rubbed the mirror with dry towels and inspected her reflection. No trace of soapy words. She threw the towels in the trash container and returned to the hostess station. A cold wind blew across an open car deck, but Denny insisted they stay stay there. Where are we going? Bonnie asked. We're going to meet our cousins, Matt said. We don't have any cousins. Yes, we do. Denny's sister has two boys my age, and we're going to stay overnight with them. Bonnie realized Matt might have cousins she knew nothing about. Mom had told Detective Morrison that Denny had a sister. You have to call me Travis tonight, Matt said, because all the boys have names that start with T. Bonnie gave Denny a disgusted look. How are you going to explain us to your sister, she asked. Matt, uh, Travis is my son. That's all the explaining I need to do. No, it isn't. What about me? I'm not your child. To herself, Bonnie added. Thank goodness. Denny said nothing. Anger spurred Bonnie on. If your relatives have watched the television news this week or glanced at a newspaper... They will know Matt was abducted. Mom's been on every channel pleading for his return. She has, Matt said. She has, and her her picture's been in all the papers. Bonnie looked at Denny. Since you and Mom were once married, surely your sister would recognize Mom. Unless she's completely stupid. She'll put two and two together when you show up with Matt. Celia and Winston never met Anita. They lived back east. And we got married on the spur of the moment. Has my picture been in the paper? Matt asked. Your picture's in store windows all over the state of Washington, Bonnie said. It's in the newspapers and on the TV. Your face is everywhere, including the internet. Wow, said Matt. He looks different now, Denny said. No one will recognize him. I recognized him. You're his sister. I'll make a deal with you, she said. Denny didn't respond. Bonnie kept talking. When we get to Bainbridge Island, you keep going, but let us reboard the ferry and go home. I promise we won't tell anyone where you are. You'll have a head start, a chance to get away. No way. You'll break your promise the minute I'm out of sight. Suit yourself. Either you let us go home, or as soon as I see your sister, I'm telling her what happened. All of it. I don't think you'll shoot Matt or me in front of your sister and your nephews. Bonnie hoped she sounded more confident than she felt. She knew it was risky to threaten Denny, but she didn't want to wait until she could ask Denny's sister for help. For all she knew, Denny's sister and brother-in-law were as bad as he was, and the two cousins were young punks on drugs. Denny's relatives might 
help him instead of helping her and Matt, even if they knew the truth. Celia won't believe you, Denny said. I'm her brother. She knows I wouldn't lie to her. Bonnie rubbed her hand across Matt's head, then showed Denny the streak of black on her palm. It'll be easy to prove you dyed his hair, she said. Shut up. Denny wiped his hand across his brow. Bonnie couldn't keep quiet. He looked nervous. Maybe she could convince him to let her and Matt go. All your sister has to do is call the police. They'll verify everything I say. Denny had never liked Bonnie when he was married to Anita, and he liked her even less now. How dare she? In her fear, when he was on his way to Bainbridge with the perfect reason to ask for money, he was so close to pulling off his plan, he refused to let Bonnie spoil it. He'd had an incredible losing streak since he took Matt. Eight days ago, he'd been riding high with more cash than he could, than he could stuff in his pockets. Now desperation chilled him more than the icy wind. Denny hated this feeling of impending disaster. He hated being broke. Hated knowing that the Hanks and the Broncos of the world knew exactly how to track him down. Even if his luck turned again so he could eventually afford to pay Hank, it would be too late. He'd be a marked man. He'd seen how Hank's anger worked. Pay up promptly or be the victim of a hit-and-run accident. That wasn't an accident at all. Denny needed money, a lot of money, and he needed it fast, before Monday morning. With Matt, he could get it. Without Matt, Denny was doomed to running from Hank and his henchmen. His plan had worked fine until Bonnie showed up. Now this annoying girl with the big mouth threatened to ruin everything. If he let Bonnie talk to Celia and Winston... He would never get the money he needed. Now, only would they refuse to pay, they'd probably call the cops. Denny could almost hear his righteous sister. You've gone too far this time, Denny. Kidnapping is a crime. I'm going to have to turn you in. This time, Denny would be in prison a lot longer than six months. The prosecutor would learn about Denny's previous conviction and his unregistered firearm. Denny couldn't afford a defense attorney. He'd be stuck with the public defender who would treat him like scum and be secretly glad to lose the case. Denny's head pounded. Tension headaches always made him sick, and now the up-and-down motion of the ferry increased his nausea. He looked around. He and the two children were alone on the lower deck. The cars were empty. All the passengers had gone upstairs to the warm lounge area. He glared at Bonnie. Loathing made his eyes narrow, as if by squinting at her he could make her disappear. Matt had agreed to do everything Denny said. Why wouldn't the girl cooperate? She had wrecked it all. Denny could think of only one solution. He had to get rid of Bonnie before the ferry docked. Shove her overboard? Pretend it was an accident? Even if she screamed as she fell, no one would hear her cries over the noisy engine. Wait, Denny took a deep breath and tried to think calmly. What if Bonnie could swim? Other passengers might see the girl splashing in pungent sound and call for help. The events played out in Denny's mind. Girl overboard, the person would yell. Everyone would rush to the side of the boat and gawk. The captain would stop the engine. Someone would throw Bonnie a life preserver and she'd hang on and get pulled back to the ferry. Or some hero type would dive in and keep her afloat until one of the small lifeboats could be launched to rescue her. If Bonnie got plucked from the frigid water, the captain and crew and all the passengers would see a dripping wet kid shaking with cold and hear her accuse Denny of kidnapping and attempted murder. She'd tell him everything, yak, 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 and Winston and Celia would see Denny on the nightly news as he was being led off to jail. Denny cringed at the imagined scene. He couldn't let it happen. He refused. I'll shoot her before I put her in the water, Denny thought. If she's dead, she'll sink right away.